Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great and for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris and in today's episode we are continuing on with our VGC Series 8 content. Not got long left, obviously been saying it all week, we've got up until Saturday when the rules will revert to Series 9 and we can say goodbye to all these restricted Pokemon. But getting on to today's episode, we're going to feature one of my all-time favourite restricted Pokemon. It is a new one that we've got access to in Sword and Shield. We've featured it many times on the channel before but we're approaching it again. Again, in a slightly different build today, and that is going to be Shadow Rider Calyrex. This team's actually from a Chinese player. Uh, they've been featured on many different YouTube channels before, including uh, Aaron Cybertron Zeng's YouTube channel with a really cool Zekrom team. And they've come up with another really strong team build here again today, but this time playing with the Cinderace alongside the uh, Shadow Rider Calyrex. And it's kind of like your generic kind of Shadow Rider Calyrex team build with the Whimsicott support, the Urshifu there, uh, the Ndidi, and the the Regieleki is kind of not seen so much, but it's a really nice option. It gives you speed control as well with a bounce, assurance, and then that wild charge with the extreme speed. So more of a physical Regieleki, which I really like. And you know, you've got very good combination with that and the Shadow Rider Calyrex, especially with the assurance where you can lower the special defense uh, stats on the opposing Pokemon and then hit them for big damage with Astro Barrage and other things like that. So really nice combinations going on throughout the team. Hopefully we can feature a lot of them in today's build. Obviously a big shout out to the creator of this team and without further ado friends we'll have a couple of games of the team and then throw the rental up at the end of the episode. So without further ado let's get into our first match of today. Okay so first up today we have a team of Whimsicott, Calyrex, Shadow Rider, Thunderous Incarnate, Yoshifu, Incineroar and Tapu Lele. So a little bit of a mirror match going on here, uh, going to be tricky course they've got double dark on their team and probably a dark type attack on the thunderous as well to make life a little bit more difficult for Calyrex to perform but we do have the Regieleki that can do a lot of work got to be careful around the Incineroar of course because that is going to be one Pokemon that can kind of hinder its ability to uh, to function super well. But we do have the Cinderace. I do feel like Cinderace is really good here, you know. Got to be careful around the Thunderous, of course. But I think Cinderace is just incredibly strong. I think Cinderace... The issue going Regieleki and Calyrex is the, the, the problem they could lead Whimsicott Calyrex themselves. And then that would be, that would be super bad. Uh, okay. I think what we're going to do is lead Cinderace... Um, uh, Regieleki, then we'll bring Calyrex and Wimmy in the back, and then we'll lock in with that. It's always tricky approaching these mirrors, though, as well, because, you know, these teams are so hyper-offensive, and when you've kind of got a, a, a similar mode yourself, it's kind of like, how do you, how do you approach it? Do you approach it, like, cautiously? And if you do that, uh, you make one wrong move, and then the game's over so quickly. Um, and I have a feeling that this is the kind of how this match might turn out. You know, one one of us is going to get uh, going to be able to capitalize quite early on, and then it makes it very difficult for your opponent to kind of come back with just the offensive nature of these sort of teams. Okay, now we've got Thunderous and Incineroar coming out. The Intimidate not helping. Regieleki, the White Herb, definitely helping our uh, our Cinderace here though, uh, just negating that. So we do have the 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 option to go for a, a jump kick turn one into Incineroar. The issue doing that is that then the Thunderous can go for an airstream into Cinderace and it's going to do a lot of damage, which is not ideal. Uh, whereas we could potentially go for like a Pyro Ball into Thunderous and then double up into it with maybe a Wild Charge. Um, and that probably would be enough to kind of get it, to be honest. Um, hmm... And not really worry too much about the Incineroar. Yeah, let's let's go for that. Let's go for that. Let's double in. Let's try. Let's max the Cinderace. Okay, Incineroar are going to switch out, which is good. So they're utilizing the Intimidate for later on, which is fine. They're going to try and get Wimmy onto the field to utilize speed control the next turn, which, you know, takes up a turn of their, their time. But it also eats into a turn of our, our max turns as well. I mean, if we can remove the Thunderous from the field right now, I mean, that's incredible. But you've got to assume that it's defined, but it potentially always could be, you know, a Prankster variant as well. You can't ever just assume because, like, it obviously is the defined variant. But at the same time, if it was Prankster, could have the option to go for its uh, Thunder Wave into something like Cinderace, make it very difficult for us to kind of function for the rest of the match. But... I feel with the Libero, we're not as 
you don't have as much kind of control over what moves you're going to be able to click because a lot of the time you're going to be either lowering stats on your opponent's side or you're just not going to be able to kind of get uh, the utility with the, the moves that you want because you put yourselves in a, in a little bit of harm's way. Let's see how much this does. Nowhere near enough, but a wild charge will be enough from Regieleki to pick up the knockout the next turn. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to kind of get the jump there, but um, I think Regieleki in an amazing spot still. You know, the next turn, they're going to be able to get their uh, their tailwind up for sure. they probably go for that this next turn, but we do have the option. Mm, do we go for Max Guard or do we go just for a, an Airstream? this next turn and a wild charge because they're not going to pick up the knockout onto Cinderace right and a wild charge will get the Thunderous and I, like, I don't think the Thunderous is in a position to get the Regieleki this next turn there's a Tailwind which is fine I kind of prefer them setting their own Tailwind up now almost Max Darkness coming out it shouldn't be enough to get their Leki oh, it is it is it is the Thunderous left alone okay um, the crit I don't know if that mattered or not. I think it may have uh, may have got us anyway. Okay, this puts us in a little bit of an awkward spot. I mean, at the same time, it doesn't because we speed tie with the Thunderous and then we're going to have our own Wimmy to come in and get our Tailwind up, which puts us ahead of the Thunderous. It means we can take a knockout with a Pyro Ball again um, and kind of keep that speed control going. So we're not in a terrible spot. So to speak but what we need to do is remove the whimsicott as soon as possible because uh once their speed control's gone things get a lot easier for us to kind of win out at least with our our calyrex um and yeah we need to we need to tailwind here the whimsicott on my opponent's side kind of free to go for a moonblast a fake tears whatever option they've got you know um, but they're not in a position to knock out anything on our side of the field, at least from this point, where we can tailwind, get the jump on Thunderous. Because they didn't go for that airstream the last turn, it means we kind of just evened everything up, especially with access to tailwind on our side of the field. Um, and although we are down a Pokemon at the minute, we can tie it up here, and we're very close to kind of tying up the scores. But it always comes down to what my opponent's last Pokemon will be. Uh, it's definitely going to be the Calyrex, I would imagine, and probably Urshifu. Okay, so there's the Thunderous gone. It's great. And uh, Whimsicott, what are you going to do? Moonblast? I imagine you Moonblast. Do you Moonblast Hour? Depends if you've got Urshifu in the back. Like, do you go for Hour Whimsicott to make it a bit easier? Okay, Dazzle Gleam. Not really an issue for us. Um... It might have been worth going for the airstream there, in all honesty, just so our Whimsicott has a little bit more um, wriggle room against something like the Incineroar there. Okay, well, Cinderace is now intimidated, and um, we are going to be kind of fake out fodder for sure. I'd still say we go for a high jump kick onto the opposing Incineroar and then we go for a Moonblast into the opposing Whimsicott. Now the Whimsicott could potentially go, well they've got Dazzling Gleam right? So they've got Dazzling Gleam, they can't knock out either of our Pokemon. Um, the high jump kick though will, if they, huh, yeah, if they don't fake out, ooh they're going for an Encore, that's not ideal, that is not ideal at all, <laughs> locked in. Uh, high jump kick is it good? I don't think minus one will be enough to get the Incineroar. The Incineroar going to be able to. Okay, well, let's see. They locked into Tailwind. Do they get rid? Do they get rid of the? Uh... No, they get rid of Cinderace. Okay, that's not too bad because they still got a turn of Tailwind left, and now you know we are locked into Tailwind ourselves. But <sighs> uh, the problem is Calyrex. Probably isn't going to be able to remove the Incineroar from the field. And then it comes down to a speed tie with their Calyrex. And depending on what item they've got as well, you know. That is the big thing. Let's see what item we've got. Just remind ourselves. We've got specs. So, 
Uh, we have to lock ourselves into Astro Barrage, really. It's the best option that we've got, especially with the Calyrex kind of coming in. Um, and we can't do anything but Tailwind here, which is not ideal. We would have been better going help in hand, and then we could have helped in hand Astro Barrage. We just got to hope that this is this is enough to get the, the Incineroar with the specs. I don't know if it is going to be able to. Locked into that Tailwind. Let's see. I mean, it's a pretty powerful attack, right? But Incineroar is a pretty strong Pokemon, yeah. And I think a Flare Blitz will probably be, probably be enough. Help in hand, Flare Blitz. Can we take it? I don't know. Maybe? I doubt it. We can. Okay. That's huge. Okay, we just win this now. Okay. This has just been a messy game. I hate this mirror. Their Tailwind ends. We still got a Tailwind in effect, but it comes down to whether or not their Color X is, is sashed or not. Because um, if it's sashed, they just win. Because we cannot, we cannot, uh, we cannot do anything but tailwind with our own, uh, with our own whimsicott, which is not ideal. Um, okay, let's do that. Let's see if we can. No, we're still locked in. We still need a tailwind. Do nothing. Encore is not something you see too commonly on whimsicott, but a nice option, you know. Kind of going to win my opponent the game if they're sashed here. Uh, but it'll... <sighs> are they sashed? I don't know. They got Urshifu. Urshifu always feels like the, the the better Pokemon to throw the sash onto in these sort of teams, and. It looks like they're not, so we do pick up a win. Like I say, just a very messy kind of game there, especially with the mirror. But at least we come out on top of that one, which is always good. Uh, but it could have went either way. Um, but very good game to my opponent, and we'll jump into the next match of today's episode. Okay, next up today we have a Xerneas, Incineroar, Garchomp, Rotom Heat, uh, Galarian Moltres, and Metagross team. So a tricky one definitely for us to kind of go up against because I think, you know, you initially think Calyrex is great here because it gets big damage onto something like the Xerneas before it can Geomancy. Can't be faked out, but then you look down the team, you see the Incineroar that's going to cause disruption and also the, the Moltres as well that causes so much disruption towards the, uh, the Calyrex there. I think we really need to to have the the kind of support from Regieleki here because it definitely helps against the Moltres that you could see come out as a lead from my opponent um and then Calyrex you've got to keep in mind that we probably are then going to need to switch it into something um just because oh it's tricky isn't it it's very tricky very very tricky unless we go Calyrex is like a late game Pokemon and then we have something like Cinderace, Regieleki up top, which kind of helps mitigate against the majority of threats that we would see come out from my opponent here and then go Wimmy and then Calyrex or either Indeedee Calyrex, which could also be useful. Um, but I think the Wimmy with its little bit more offensive pressure against something like Garchomp uh, and with the Moonblast can actually hit stuff rather than the DD that's going to be walled out by a few things on my opponent's team. It's probably a better option, in all honesty. So, let's click in with these, see how we get on today in this second one. And uh, hopefully it's not as messy as the first one was. I know I say the first one's messy, but I just say that because it's so... The, the margins in those matches are just so fine, you know, when you've got like... It comes down to speed ties a lot of the time, or... How you manage speed control well and it just it just they always feel awkward to me i don't know if, if you guys are the same right well we've got moltres and garchamp from my opponent okay it's not the worst it's not the best either um because you don't really have a way to get the, the garchomp super quick and it's quite easy for um, my opponent to protect the Moltres here. Um, I think what we'll do is we'll go Airstream into Garchomp and bring in Wimmy. And play off the fact that the Moltres probably is going to protect you. Because I think you've got to. Or withdraw it, which is fine. Incineroar? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Because the ideal situation here is that we get rid of the Garchomp and then it frees up Regieleki to kind of have a way more freedom going forward in this match. The speed control is going to be nice here, especially because the Intimidate's kind of wasted from my opponent. 
when in reality you would think oh I'll get the intimidate onto the onto the bunny and then it's got we're, we're, we're gonna be able to handle it a bit better but now it means that you've got to switch out to switch back in again or try and get a parting shot this next turn which makes it a bit more tricky for my opponent to uh, to utilize okay gotcha I'm committing to the max are we gonna see a max quake here it'd be nice if we do especially into Cinderace but it's more likely going to be into uh, the Aleki slot, I would imagine. Maybe not, though. Maybe you just don't attack into that slot thinking, well, you're probably going to Volt Switch out, potentially. Um, but the Airstream is going to be very useful in this situation if we do see a quick come out into uh, the big bunny. Not doing massive damage, but it's it's decent-ish damage, isn't it, into the Garchomp. Um and the next turn, what we want to probably do is get rid of... Oh, no, they're going into um, the Wimmy. But Wimmy going to be able to take this pretty well. Say pretty well. Still, still stings. Right, what we need to do is go help in hand, max Knuckle into the Incineroar and hope that that's enough to actually pick up the knockout. We're not intimidated, so... Think that it probably is going to be able to we've got the speed boost now my opponent and i know we could lose whimsicott here so we lose our, our, our kind of means of tailwind but i don't think it's massively necessary and the plus one is going to be so useful especially if we can avoid a parting shot here and get rid of this incineral i'm hoping we can but i'm not sure if we need like the life orb to to do that nope okay there we go Cinderace, my boy. You know, my little girl Theo would be loving this right now. Her favorite Pokemon is, is Score Bunny. So, here we go. For those little Score Bunnies, Big Cinder's still doing it. Okay, Max Wormwind coming out. Makes a lot of sense from the Garchomp. God, it does so much damage. It does so much damage. Garchomp is so underrated in this format, you know? We saw uh, Gabriella Gatti run it in um, Players Cup Global Finals with the Life Orb, and it's just. It's just nuts how much damage it does. Even if you intimidate it, it's still hitting like a truck. Like, you know. Okay, Zern coming out. All right, what have we got? What have we got to hit Zern? Have we got Steel Spike? I don't know if we have. Have we? Because uh, we can... Let's just click this for a minute and just see. We have got Steel Spike. Okay. But it's very risky going for it because we go for the Steel Spike. I mean, it's not too bad at all, really, is it? It's not bad at all. Uh, do we need to... I don't think we need to help at hand. I think we could tailwind here because then we set up kind of a nice end game for ourselves with Aleki and mm, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. We tailwind. Do we need to tailwind though? I don't know if we do. We tailwind. I really don't think we need to tailwind, but we'll go for it anyway, just to be extra sure in case the Geomancy does go up. But if they don't protect the Xerneas here, then the Nakad, yeah. And we get a, def a defense boost, which is definitely going to help us. But they they probably max quick into... Uh... Although... Yeah, I mean, we have to remember as well, we're not plus one. We're just neutral because of the max worm and it kind of negated that. But thankfully is enough to get the Xerneas here. Maybe my opponent thought they could maybe take it. I don't know. But the max quake covers that attack uh, pretty well. Oh, they go on a whimmy. Okay, so the Tailwind there was really useful. Because... Ooh, still tricky, though. The one Pokemon that we've got to, to deal with is the Garchomp. Now, you kind of want to bring in... Um, yeah, we want to bring in the old Calyrex. Now, how many Quakes has that Garchomp got off? Two. So it's plus two special defense. Are we going to be able to take it? Because I don't think we'll take them. Uh, Pyro Ball, maybe. Pyro Ball plus Astro Barrage might be able to do it. But you've got to worry about... You've got to worry so much about the, the, the Moltres having Sucker Punch. Because it's like that stray fourth move that you see sometimes on these Pokemon. So things could fall apart quite quickly here. I'm going to click the Astro Barrage button. And I'm com I'm confident that Pyro Ball would, will... And, it, and an Astro Barrage would get this Moltres. So... Not seeing any protect come out. Here we go. Neutral still. Bosh. I don't know if I knew. Uh, 
an Astral Barrage is going to get either. I don't think it is. I don't think it is. I think we lose now. Because I don't think we get the Garchomp, which is what we need to really get. Oh, so close. Earthquake. We should have bounced. We should have bounced. Yeah, and then, yeah, and then it's like Regieleki. But, but, but. No, we, well, the Life Orb's done it for us. I was just going to say we have Extreme Speed, so we could get the Garchomp with Extreme Speed. And then, and then kind of close it up. Because the Moltres shouldn't really be knocking out Regieleki in one hit. You know? But now, it's all good. It's all fine because we got Wild Charge to come in and just bop this this bird and take the victory for us, my friends. So this is another one. It feels like it just feels like I don't know. It is just the team, you know. It's always this sort of like it's the team, uh, the hyper offensive sort of balance of the team, um, where you have to get returns on like every commitment that you take in uh, like per turn. You've got to get a return. You can't like just click a move and think, well, if it goes this way, then we, it might turn out bad. You can't be on that back foot. You've got to try and always kind of keep up. Very good game to my opponent. Um, and we'll uh, we'll have one more with this team today because it is a lot of fun. A third and final opponent of the episode playing a very interesting team in Groudon, Volcarona, Rotom Wash, Dragapult, uh, Hitmontop and Venusaur. How can I forget the Hitmontop? It's like one of my favorite Pokemon. Say that about everything, don't I? I'm sorry. So what have we got here? We've got a, a kind of a sun team. Obviously, the Groudon, the Venusaur, can be the probably the most threatening kind of Pokemon to the team. Uh, you've got Redirection potentially on the Volcarona. can kind of disrupt with Struggle Bug, but I don't know if it'll be able to get that off. Wide God going to be something that we need to consider for sure on the uh, in the hit on top. That's definitely something that's going to be uh, a little bit tricky to deal with, of course. I think, you know, I feel like we could probably just go Calyrex and Didi here, you know, and kind of blow through my opponent, just max Calyrex, uh, utilize help and hand or um, redirection just to kind of get around most things on my opponent's team. Um, and I think we'll do that with Cinderace in the back. And so my opponent really hasn't got any speed control, you know, they got max airstream potentially on the Dragapult, but that's literally it. They're relying more on, on redirection, maybe ally switch to kind of get around certain threats. But other than that, I don't really see why they're doing it. And I think maybe Urshifu is not a bad last Pokemon. Uh, I don't think Regieleki is going to be very useful here uh, at all, in all honesty. Um, kind of gets walled out by the Groudon, do much to the, the Dragapult. I mean, we got Assurance and stuff like that, so could be. I just feel Urshifu probably provides a little bit more support, especially against something like Groudon. Especially in the sun, you know, you're still going to be able to get those, those big, big damage and attacks off against it. Um, but we see him on top and Volcarona come out from my opponent. Now, I always want to, like, in this situation, just go help in hand and just kind of go after the Volcarona. But I do feel like the Volcarona is probably going to be... Uh, is it going to be sashed? It's going to be sashed. It's probably sashed, right? I mean, if it's got Rage Powder, it makes sense to be sashed. You get a bit more out of it, which makes me want to... It feels like I want to go Expanding Force, Expanding Force. But at the same time, we could just see why God busted out from my opponent, which makes it a little bit more tricky. Um... Like sucker punch isn't an issue from the from the hit on top, so we don't need to worry about that because of the the uh, the terrain and the redirection we got. Okay, I'm gonna go expanding force, and I'm gonna go max mindstorm. I think max mindstorm into the Volcarona. So let's see how quickly we can blow through this. But like I say, if the Volcarona is sashed, it makes it a little bit tricky because then they get the struggle bug onto us. Put us down to minus one. And then we're kind of on, a, on an uphill climb to get that back. Okay, we're going to see wide guard, which is fine. Um, which is what we kind of expected to see. This should blow up the Volcarona. Yeah, no sash. So that's good. So that's one grim near boost under our belts, and we're sitting in a pretty nice spot. 
uh, the expanded force going to be blocked by the wide guard, but that's fine. Um, we were kind of just covering in case they didn't wide guard, you know? But it was likely most situations was that it was always going to wide guard. Um, okay, what comes in next? Venusaur. Now, Venusaur is likely to be sashed. Now, I would imagine Venusaur is likely to be sashed. Um, hmm, do we go after the Hitmontop? I don't really care about the Hitmontop, you see, at this point. It doesn't really, it's not really causing us any issues at all. Um, I don't see the Venusaur being able to knock out the Calyrex either in one hit. Not even help in hand. So it makes me want to just go, I think we got Mystical Fire. Just to get around another Wide Guard, because it could potentially whack out the Wide Guard again, but not going to. Uh, Groudon coming in. The big issue, of course, is Sleep Powder from this Venusaur. Uh, it's going to come out probably now into Calyrex. No, it is going to max. Okay, we get away with that one a little bit, because the Sleep Powder there would have probably shut this game down for us, made it very difficult for us to kind of get any momentum to come back. Uh, which is why the redirection probably would have been the more sensible play there, in all honesty. Being a little bit greedy, thinking about a sash, and there may not even be a sash there in Venusaur. Like, Venusaur's commonly... Okay. Max Garden. Well. Hmm. Okay, I think I know what we're going to... Mm hmm. We need to... Yeah. Because Calyrex becomes way less useful when it's not maxed. Because the Hitmontop is definitely more of an issue for us. Um, I think we just go after the Venusaur again. Do we just double up into it? Or do we go redirect? It means Calyrex. No. I think we go. I think we go exactly the same play again. Because once we remove the Venusaur, then the, this match gets so much easier. G-Max Vine Lash coming out. Yep. I mean, we take that pretty comfortably. It's going to start the residual damage, of course. But if this... If there's no Sash... Which, no, there's not. Huh. Huh. Yeah. So this play isn't the worst. It just, you know... Means we get a bit of damage onto the Groudon, I guess. Because we can't redirect Prespice Blades. And that does a nice chunk of damage. Um... Citrus Berry kicking in for Ndidi. But again, we're kind of... We're going to struggle to hit the ground on with what we've got out in the field now. I mean, we, you know, the, the, the big thing is we're not locked into a move just yet with, with Calyrex. And we can't be faked out. And we can probably take the ground on down with... What have we got? We've got? We do have a Grass-type attack. So, we can just help in hand Grass-type attack. And then it's him on top versus World and him on top all the greatest respect in the world as much as I love him on top it's not the kind of Pokemon you want to be clearing things up at the end of a game that would be your Groudon so yeah we're gonna see why God we have to see why God from the top I think here yeah. yeah Leaf Storm very nice option not one that you see too common um, yeah let's just help in hand let's go ham let's go all in with a help in hand Leaf Storm and that will get rid of the Groudon, and then we're going to be able to get rid of the Hitmontop pretty easily after that. Um, we still got Eshifu and Cinderace in the back. So, yeah, it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. Super fine. As long as this Leaf Storm hits, of course, because that's the big thing. You, you, know, you always know. I'm going to touch a, a bit of wood here just to make sure we do. But you know when you go hard into it sometimes like this. These low accuracy moves is so risky because if it misses, that's a whole turn just gone. But I think we're so far ahead at this point, it doesn't really matter too much. Um, what's this top going to do? Triple Axel. It's gonna, is it going to be able to knock us? Yeah, easy. Yeah, it's a nice option. I love Triple Axel as a move as well. It's a really unique move. I do love it. Um, I love my opponent just not going for the wide guard there, not caring. Knowing that we weren't going to lock into anything. Uh, let's just bring in Cinderace and we'll take advantage of the sun and go for a Pyro Ball and that will be enough, more than enough, to get rid of old Toppy Top. Let's go Pyro Ball and let's go the last turn of the Psychic Train, let's go Expanding Force so we can punish if they don't go for um, the Wide God. 
Which is probably what we should have done the last turn. We didn't need the help in hand. But, you know. Yeah. This match could have been over. Ooh. Top actually survives that. In the sun, you know. That just shows how good Top is, honestly. Uh, we get the burn. Um, but Ndidi. Taking that like a champ, honestly. Um, as we do get the expanded force and pick up the knockout. And we only take that well because of the burn, of course. Gotta to, got to remember that, gotta remember that. But good game to my opponent. Um, yeah, I mean, Calyrex just... In those situations where you just don't have a way to kind of get around the Calyrex maxing turn one, it makes it very difficult to kind of catch up after that. So, yeah, we will hop over now. Three really good games today. I hope you've enjoyed them. We'll hop over and remind you all of the rental code. Right, friends, here is the rental code for today's team. If you do try it out, I hope you enjoy it. Make sure you do go and check out the uh, the blog post about this team. It's got a massive breakdown of how the team functions, what it's meant to do, all the different interactions between uh, or some of the sets on these Pokemon. Really interesting article, so I would definitely go recommend it. It's down in the description, like I said. And if you do try the team out, let me know down in the comment section below what your thoughts are on it. The choice specs on the Calyrex is just nasty just nasty and uh, we've seen it perform really well in today's episode which is always which is always like the plan and perfect and nice to see and stuff like that so hope at the end of the day again you've enjoyed today's episode thank you so much for all the support and uh, we'll wrap it up there have a great rest of your day take care of yourselves and i'll see you all for another episode on the channel very soon so until then take care and bye bye